Oh, friends. Oh, my goodness. Do you remember me? <laughs> or do you just remember all the scales videos that have been coming out for you? Hi, welcome to our live stream <laughs> that happens once in a blue moon these days. I have some coffee today. Oh my gosh. So cheers. Rather than tea, we actually have some coffee. We are going to read an excerpt from Mozart's Letters, Mozart's Life. And I have a magical medieval tune to play for you. I was just playing this with one of my students earlier today. And oh my gosh, it is so awesome. So Jose, hey there. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> okay, listen to this gorgeous song. This is from the Cantigas Festival favorites. Hold on a second, can you? I think I need to move this around a little bit. Sad act or sad act. I'm so sorry. Bear with me. I'm so happy you're here too. <laughs> I am trying out contacts and I can't actually see anything. You'd think that I could maybe see, but I can't. So just bear with me. Thank you guys for commenting and for being here. Wow, there's five of you here. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't think there'd be anyone here. I hope you're having a good day. And if you're not having a good day, here is a whether you're having a good or a bad day, listen to this magical song. This is from Orchestography. It is called Belle Qui Tiens Ma Vie, I think. This Renaissance classic can be played in a variety of rhythms, rhythmic forms, to accompany dancers of the slow, stately pavan, the galliard and waltz-like triple time, or the fast-moving brawl. This melody is taken from a popular French love song. I've played this one before, but it's just like so fall sounding to me. person and go to a renaissance fair. This is one of my favorite ever books ever written. Whoops. I know you've heard me babble about it three zillion times. The Cantigas Renaissance Festival Favorites. It is by Mel Bay. And the, like, like you can actually see the notes, even if you can't see because your contacts are blurry. You can see them from far away and they have, you know, they've got like chords and all these that kinds of things. I was showing this on Christy Lynn's um, Harp, um, Harp Grove Circle the other day, which I'm a part of. I, do you guys know Christy Lynn? Any harpists out there that know Christy Lynn? She is magical as well. And um, anyway, I was talking about this in one of my groups that I was in. It's fun to have groups like of like-minded musicians, like not necessarily like-minded, but like-minded in the sense that we all love the harp <laughs> or we all love the violin or whatever it is. It's just, it's so fun. So anyway, I should probably play you some more things probably from this book. Let's see, what else can we play? I do have my favorites. I do have a lot of favorites in here. Um, at our next group, can you guys hear me okay? Let, like, let me know if you can't hear me because I did try to do this on my computer, but my computer for some reason like doesn't have live stream capabilities or like, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Um, but my phone does. So you are currently on my phone. 
This one is also from France. France has like so many beautiful uh, melodies, medieval melodies. This is Alada. I love to play this one. Um, especially like if there's like two of us and I can play the chords. You can hear me. Thanks, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I love playing the chords on the viola and like having someone else play the melody. So fun. So I think in our next in-person group thing that we do, I think this is on the group class um, list. If you, you know what? You just have to come out and come to one of the group classes. <laughs> just like catch a flight, come out. We're going to have a Halloween fall themed group class at a coffee shop that's across the street from me. And we're going to just have a magical like fall Halloween time playing medieval tunes and, and whatnot. So um, anyway, listen to this. slowly you can play it fastly but it says that the ladas were processional songs performed by religious zealots seeking atonement the word lada is latin for praise this melody is taken from the notre dame school a music oh sorry a group of musicians who worked at the cathedral of notre dame and other parisian parisian churches between 1190 1190 and 1210 so you can bet that the original um like manuscript for this looked like it was probably like written on beautiful you know gold leaf parchment paper with a quill and and um i just i don't know it's just something that's so cool about playing really old music so i think one of the reasons i love this book as well is not because like every single song is magical but like the cover is really beautiful as well. The cover is so beautiful. <laughs> this book has been so well loved. It's it's falling apart. It's falling apart, but that's fine. I'm probably going to have to buy at least, you know, a hundred of these books within my lifetime because they I just go through them so quickly. And I would rather have a book. I It's nice to have a, a digital copy, I know, but I like having a book. So maybe what I'll do is just like rip all these pages out and like put it put it like in a a leather bound spiral notebook or something and see if I can preserve these <laughs> so anyway it's like I wouldn't want to throw this book away because it has like it has like all of the in my mind it has like all the energy from the you know, like happy memories of lessons in person and lessons online and just enjoying flipping through like I just don't want to, and it has all my scribbles all over it. So you know, I need to. I actually don't want to buy another one. I want to preserve this one somehow. Anyway, oh my gosh, I'm just babbling. I've missed some of your comments. Let me see if I can find those. Um, let me see if I can find you. Yo, you guys, I can't. <laughs> I don't know how to find your comments. I have seen some comments going by. So thank you for, thank you for commenting. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for, you know, watching the scale videos. Eventually other videos will come out. Um, but that has been, we're almost done with all the scale videos. That has been a project that has been sponsored by Patreon. We've been learning all the scales and all the music theory for the last like year and a half. So I know you're all sick of scales. I know. Um, so other things will come out soon. Um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be starting the Shradiac Scale series, so that's going to be like a practice along with me video. We're going to video series on Patreon. I'm going to publish the first two videos, one for violin, one for viola, on YouTube, so you can see what we'll be doing. And then if you want to join that, um, you can just hop on over to Patreon and 
I've, I've been thinking it would be nice to add some more things like to do on Patreon because I feel like a lot of you guys are getting kind of bored there. Um, even though you get a post and like three or four videos <laughs> there every week. Um, but I think that I've, I don't, I could be wrong, but I know a lot of people do live streams on Patreon and maybe we can find some fun things to do that way. Or we could do, um, I mean, we already have a live group that we do on Zoom every month. I don't know. Just let me know like what you want. Let me know what you guys want. We could like learn a specific song and then maybe like at one of our live stream, not live stream, but like Zoom meetings, we could like play that song or something. I don't know. I just want, my main thing that I want to do is just have fun there. <laughs> as well as give you obviously like give you content that you learn things you know you like learn stuff so i think it's time for one of mozart's letters because i have to go to a doctor's appointment i my alarm's gonna go off in a little bit to leave to go have another eye appointment um so anyway let's read from the blessed mozart's letters mozart's letters mozart's life Selected letters edited and newly translated by Robert Spaithling. So I just opened up one as I was setting up here and I scanned through it and it says to my dearest friend. So that's, you know, the one that we must read. So because I just felt like that was appropriate. So I have absolutely no idea what it's about. It is to Abba Joseph Bullinger or Bullinger in Salzburg written by Mozart while he was in Paris and we were just playing French songs so that's apropos so Paris August 7th 1778 let's think about what was going on in the world in 1778 um Paris 1778 so like when was the French Revolution and then there was the American Revolution the 1776 and all of that um so it was actually quite a, a time of political like turmoil and things and Vienna St. George, hey you, nice to see you. So lots of things were happening in the world. You know, I know we've all been like, you know, we all feel like the world is ending and that things are going crazy, but you know, there was a pretty crazy time before this too. So things happening. Anyway, let's have one more little sip of coffee here. To my very dearest friend, allow me to thank you, first of all, hold heart, wholeheartedly for yet another proof of your friendship, which you have rendered me by taking such wonderful care of my dear father, first preparing him so well, then consoling him like a true friend. You have played your role superbly. These are my father's own words. Dearest friend, how can I ever thank you enough you have saved my most beloved father for me. Thanks to you, I still have him. I won't say any more about it right now because I can't even attempt to express my full gratitude to you. I actually feel too weak, too incompetent, too worn out, dearest friend. I will be in your debt always. You undoubtedly know that the best and truest friends are the poor. Rich people know nothing about friendship especially those who are born rich and e even he sounds like you know somebody a social justice warrior or something <laughs> i don't know uh and even the ones who become rich by circumstances often lose their way and succumb to their fortune you are writing that i should now think only about my father i should tell him frankly what my thoughts are and put my trust in him completely how unfortunate would I be if I needed to be reminded of that? It is certainly appropriate that you are telling me this. However, I am quite happy, and you can be too, that I am not in need of this advice. In my most recent letter to my father, I told him already everything I know myself up to now, and I assured him that I will always keep him informed about the details of my life and always tell him honestly what I think because I have complete confidence in him and I am certain of his fatherly concern, love and goodness, knowing full well that one day he will grant me fulfillment of a request on which the happiness and joy of the rest of my life depend, which will be an honest and reasonable request. 
as expected of me, and which he will not deny me. Dearest friend, don't let my father read any of this. You know how he is. He would start to think and worry about it to no good purpose. Now let me turn to our Salzburg story. By the way, this is like full of exclamation points. Like every, <laughs> he's like so excited. I'm, I'm one of those people as well that's like, you know, putting an exclamation part, point against like everything. Just, I don't know. Now let me turn to our Salzburg story, exclamation point. You know, my dear friend, how I hate Salzburg, exclamation point. Not only an account of the injustices that my father and I have suffered there, which would be reason enough to forget such a place altogether. <laughs> you know how I hate Salzburg, he says. <laughs> how much we've suffered there, which would be reason enough to forget such a place altogether. Indeed, wipe it from your memory. But let's leave that as it is. After all, things should always be worked out so that we can all live respectively with each other. But to live respectively and to live happily are two different things. And the latter I couldn't manage without some witchcraft. Well, no matter what happens, it will always be my greatest pleasure to embrace my dearest father and sister, and the sooner the better. But I can't deny the fact that my pleasure and joy would be twice as much if this could happen somewhere else. Because I have far more hope to live a pleasurable and happy life anywhere else. Perhaps you misunderstand me and think that I feel Salzburg is too small for me. If you think that, you are quite mistaken. I told my father some of the reasons already. Let me tell you just one. Salzburg is no place for my talent. <laughs> First of all, the court musicians do not enjoy a good reputation. Second, there's nothing going on musically. Nothing going on musically. <laughs> there is no theater, no opera, and even if they wanted to stage one, who would be there to sing? For the last five or six years, the Salzburg Orchestra has always been rich in what is useless and unnecessary and very poor in what is essential. And essential things that are indispensable, they don't have at all. In fact, we have such a situation right now. The cruel French are suddenly the reason why the orchestra has no Kapellmeister. Well, that's the way it goes if you don't plan ahead. One should always have half a dozen Kapellmeisters in reserve so if one drops out, you can instantly call upon another. But pray, where to get one now? I will do my best to lend a hand. Tomorrow, first thing, I will hire a carriage for the whole day and make the rounds among the hospitals and infirmaries to see whether I can't find one. A Kapellmeister in the hospital or infirmary. <laughs> he's got like, he's just so funny. Yet it is more useful, like, you know, the head of the orchestra to go to the hospital. He will rent a carriage for the whole day and make the rounds among the hospitals and infirmaries to see whether I can't find one. Yet it is more useful and reasonable to look for a Kapellmeister, since they really have none at present, than to write all over the creation, all over creation as I have been told they are doing, to hire a good female singer. I can hardly believe it. A female singer? Exclamation question mark when we have so many already exclamation point <laughs> and all of them first rate if they want if they want after a tenor i could understand it although we don't really need one either but a female singer a prima donna after all we have a cast castrato now wow they have castrato it's true um haydn it's true Mad, I can, I'm sorry, I'm like, I'm not, not understanding what's written here, is sickly. Madame Haydn is sickly. She has gone too far with her austere religious life, but anyway, she is a rare case. I am surprised that she hasn't long since lost her voice with all her constant flag, flagellations and whippings. Oh my goodness. Her posturing in a hairy shirt, her unnatural fasting and nightly praying, she will probably keep her voice for a while yet indeed, instead of getting worse, instead of getting worse, it will probably get better in time. But if it should happen that God at, le at last will, will place her among his saints, then we still have five female singers left who can all compete for first place. So you can clearly see how unnecessary it is to hire a new one. But let me take my argument to the extreme. Let's just imagine that apart from the weeping Magdalena, we had no other female singers, which of course is not the case, 
but let's nevertheless pretend that one of them suddenly gets pregnant, another one is taken to jail, the third is going to be flogged, the fourth perhaps beheaded, <laughs> and the fifth snatched up by the devil. What then? Well, nothing. After all, we still have the castrato. And you know what kind of an animal that is? He can sing in the highest register and would therefore be excellent in a woman's role. Of course, the chapter would object, but objecting is not a bad, as bad as rejecting. Besides, no one worries much about the gentlemen of the clergy. Oh my gosh. So then, in the meantime, we'll allow Herr Cicerelli to take back and forth between his male and female roles. Um, in the end, because I know at Salzburg they love variety, change, and innovation, I can see before my eyes a large field of opportunities whose realization can truly make history. My sister and I practiced it a little when we were children. Just imagine what adults can do with this idea. Oh, there are no limits to those who think imaginatively. I'm certainly not worried, and I will gladly take on the, the task of bringing Me Metastasio from Vienna or at least make him an offer to write several dozen operas in which the male lead and the female lead never encounter each other on stage, for in this way the castrato can play both the male and the female lover in one performance, <laughs> and the piece would be found especially interesting, because it allows us to admire the virtuousness, virtuosoness, or no, no, the virtuousness, there we go, because it would allow us to admire the virtuousness of the two lovers, which goes to, so far that they deliberately avoid speaking with each other in public. There you have the opinion of the true patriot. Now you had better see to it that the orchestra will soon get an ass, because that's what it needs most of all. It has only a head at present. But that's just what's wrong with it. Unless there is some change in this scenario, I shall not come back to Salzburg. Adieu. I continue to pray for your good friendship, and I assure you that I will be forever your true friend and closest servant, Wolfgang Romatz. Oh my gosh. Isn't that so funny? I wonder why he signed it Wolfgang Romat Romatz. I've never... Um... See, I mean, I guess I, anyway, <laughs> that's funny. Isn't that hilarious? That is such a funny, such a funny um, letter. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to put a little dog ear on this page here. So, so funny. I just feel like Mozart would have been the, the, the like most fabulous person to be friends with. I mean such a sense of humor you'd be I would imagine you'd be around him and you would just like automatically be lifted up into this you know hilarious and funny and comical very witty you know you just like I don't know but I'm sure he obviously had his depressive episodes like we all do but I know from reading a little bit about from what I remember about reading ages ago about him he really loved to laugh and he always tried to look on the right side and was optimistic so, so funny, so witty. Anyways, well, I think with that, I better get ready for my eye appointment. I now can't see anything, like everything is blurry. <laughs> um, it's my contacts. I don't, I've actually never worn contacts before, but the reason I'm exploring contacts is just because when I'm teaching on Zoom, the light is like reflecting into my it like it just it reflects and it's kind of a pain in the butt to wear glasses all the time and so but I literally can't like see anything <laughs> everything is like so blurry so I'm gonna love and leave you guys I can see your commenting I can't read them I will have to come back and, and read these thank you so much for being here this was really fun and stay tuned for more scale videos I'm sorry that there's gonna be like you know scale videos coming out for the next thousand years it's gonna feel like but there will be other content and if you have any requests for what we can do on live streams let me know if you like these i enjoy doing them too it's fun to just have a sip of tea play a tune and and read some of mozart's letters um we could definitely do that so mwah, have a magical and fabulous day and don't forget that you're a magical earthling and I will see you guys very soon. Thank you so much. You can find all the stuff that I'm doing with the studio and Patreon and all of that on my website. It's just Violin Viola Masterclass. So website, Violin Viola Masterclass. YouTube, obviously, Violin Viola Masterclass. Instagram, Violin Viola Masterclass. Patreon, Amazon, uh, 
sorry, Patreon Violin Viola Masterclass, but it's all on my website, which is violinvioolamasterclass.com. All right, you guys, lots of love. See you very soon. Thank you for being here. Bye.